Susan Jones Teaching just recently did a video explaining the different types of word problems. I'll link her video at the end of this one. But it really got me thinking. She's right. Teaching word problems is probably one of the trickiest things to teach children. That's why in today's video, I'm going to show you how to teach word problems by using word problem games. second grade parents and teachers make teaching as simple, fun, and engaging as possible. If you want teaching to be fun, simple, and systematic, then make sure you go ahead and subscribe down below and click that bell so that you can be notified each and every time I upload a new video. Well, today I'm going to give you five really fun ways to teach word problems for addition and subtraction through the use of word problem games. Now, I think it's important to know that you won't be successful in actually implementing word problem games if you haven't taught children how to actually break down and tackle word problems. One way I love to teach children exactly how to do this is by using an acronym. And this acronym is called CUBES. CUBES is just a simple method of teaching children all the different steps into breaking down word problems so they'll actually be successful in answering word problems. Now the C stands for circling any numbers or units, if you were doing measuring, that you see in the word problem. Now the U stands for underlining the question. What is this question actually asking me to do? And that brings us to the B, which is to actually box the action word or the do of the problem. This action word will be their clue to knowing exactly which operation they would be doing. So addition or subtraction. Next you want children to evaluate exactly what steps they would have to do in order to solve this word problem. Most word problems have multiple steps so children will simply write down all the steps they would need to do. Now the E actually stands for two steps which is evaluate and also eliminate. You want children to eliminate cross out get rid of any words that are simply useless so pretty much anything that's not circle underline or box last but not least the s stands for solve and show your work i mean that's kind of self-explanatory <laughs> now if you want the poster i just used to describe cues i'll put the link right here and i'll also put the link down below in the description now once you've taught this method you are ready to play some word problem games <laughs> Now to make your life even simpler, because I'm all about working smarter, not harder, go ahead and find some worksheets online. I always use k5learning.com. And then you're gonna find a worksheet that correlates with the skill that you're actually teaching. Okay, so our first game is called Cup Pong. And with this game, you will need cups and simply ping pong balls. Go ahead and set up the cups in a pyramid shape on a flat surface. I always use a table, but you could use the floor. Once you have your cups set up, go ahead and cut up the problems in the worksheet. Then put the problems in the different cups, making sure all the cups have at least one or more questions. Next, you're gonna give children a sheet of paper so that they can actually solve all the different problems on the worksheet. If you wanna play this game in teams, you'll just make sure that every team has the same materials. Now for each child, they will go ahead and take a ping pong ball and go ahead and toss the ball into a cup. They'll continue to throw and toss the ball until it successfully gets inside of a cup. Once the ball is inside of a cup, they'll go ahead and grab out one of the questions. Then they'll solve that question on their sheet of paper. Once they have successfully solved the word problem, they'll give the ball to the next player or if they're playing by themselves, they'll get to play again. Once all the questions in a cup are gone, then that cup will be removed from the game. Now the object of the game is to completely remove all the cups. If you're playing in teams, then the first team that removes all the cups from the table would win the game. Okay, so let's jump into our next game. And our next game is called Balloon Pop. And for this game, what you will do is go ahead and cut the questions up in the worksheet and roll them up into a balloon and go ahead and blow the balloon. Then go ahead and tape the balloons on a board or a wall and give children a nice thumbtack. Disclaimer, don't give all your children a thumbtack at the same time. That just has liability written all over it. Children will need some sort of sheet of paper to work out the problems. Then when it's a child's turn, they will take a thumbtack or something sharp and actually pop one of the balloons. Once they pop a balloon, the question should come out of the balloon. They'll then go sit down and solve that 
problem. Now you can play this game with different teams and just make sure that all teams have the same number of balloons, thus having the same number of problems to solve. First team to successfully pop all the balloons and answer all the word problems would win the game. So if you ever play Pin on Tails on the Donkey, let me know down below in the comments. I love playing that game, especially at like birthday parties. But our next game is called Pin the Tail on the Problem. Now for this game, what you would do is get a worksheet that doesn't have more than 10 problems. Then go ahead and get a deck of cards and pull out the exact same number of problems on the worksheet. So if you have nine problems on a worksheet, go ahead and pick the cards two through nine out of the deck and then use A's for one. Next, go ahead and tape the cards on either a wall or a board and then get out a blindfold. If you're playing in teams, you can have one member of each team do this at the exact same time, or you could just have one person go at a time. If you do want multiple teams, just make sure every team has cards and the worksheet. Once your child is blindfolded, they will go to the board or the wall and they will try to use their hands to find a card. Once they found the card, they'll take off the blindfold and look at the number that got on the card. Then they'll go ahead and solve the corresponding number on their worksheet. And of course, if you're playing with teams, whichever team has all the correct answers, the fastest would win. All right, so I already told y'all I like working smarter and not harder, so one thing I do is have a whole bunch of games stored away in my tool belt. That way I can pull them out whenever I need to. And one thing I do is have certain games that you can use for any lesson. Go ahead and download my free activity guide that helps make teaching as easy as possible by giving you games and activities that you can use for any lesson. Just like earlier, our next game is going to have you cut up the problems in the worksheet and put them in balloons. And our next game is called Granny. With this game, kids will get to become the good old granny. You also need to make sure you have enough balloons for each child playing this game. Now, if you want to play this game in teams, just make sure that all teams have the same number of balloons, but also make sure that there are enough balloons for every single child. If you're playing by yourself, eh, you have nothing to worry about. <laughs> when you say go, children will have to pop the balloon using their bottoms just like a little old granny. Once balloons pop, they'll go ahead and fall to the floor and answer their problem. If playing with teams, once the team has successfully popped all their balloons and answered all their questions correctly, they would win. If playing with just one child, they have to pop all the balloons and answer all the questions correctly. So who runs the world, girls? Who runs the world, girls? That brings us to our next game, which is called Around the World. With this game, you'll simply cut out all the problems that you have on a worksheet. Then go ahead and place those problems all around your room. Then in a circular motion, children must walk around the room, find your problems, and solve your problem. Once they have solved all the problems, they must show you their sheet of paper. You will simply look over the work and see if they got all the answers correct. Now, if they didn't get an answer correct, you'll just tell them how many answers they must go back and fix without giving them the actual number that they got wrong. This way, they have to find their error and correct it. Now, if you're playing with multiple children, you can make this into a game by having the first person that gets all the correct answers win the game. Now teaching word problems is stressful in and of itself, but it can be really stressful if you're dealing with children that don't know their basic addition and subtraction facts. That's why it's important to teach kids to master basic facts before ever trying to shove a word problem in their face. That's why you need to watch this video where I show you a really cool game that you can play with children in order for them to not only learn their basic addition and subtraction facts, but master them too. I'll see you in that video.